a hitch. Hi, Fran. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a couple things I did. I wanted to show this in case anybody missed it. That this is just the inside of this. <laughs> and quite honestly, I can't tell you which one I like better. I think they're so cool. Good morning, Denise. Hi, Evanelle. Good morning, Sharon. Jean, Susan, Melba from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Thanks for getting up early with me on a Monday. Hopefully this makes your Monday a little happier. Hope everybody's doing well today. So I think um, this week I'm going to try to concentrate on the glossy paper. So I have um, on Wednesday when we do our regular live, I'm going to do the iron technique again with the wax paper and the glossy paper because I think that's a really fun one in case you guys um, never saw it before. That way you can see something new. But anyway, so this is these are just the insides and the outsides of the card. So it just goes to show you that card that I made with the floating frame. I think it looks really cool the way this is, but I wanted to show you those are just two versions of the same kind of card. And then another card, if you're looking to use up some of your scraps, we made this last week. And this just uses of the pieces of the um, Share What You Love Designer Series paper. A couple of mine are a little crooked, but if you hold it right, you can't tell the difference. And then um, ended up, after the fact, I stamped this lighter. But um, a couple of girls in the stamp club, and don't mind my fingers, I was mulching, so they're really gross. <laughs> they stamped it in um, mossy meadow, meadow over top of this, so it kind of gave like a shadow effect. So really cool card for your scraps. So you just we just alternated um, rectangle, square, rectangle, and then the opposite. But it's just basically the flip sides of the paper, so that was really simple. And then another one was a shaker card that we made and this one was for my friend Jamie but she was unable to make it because she was lucky enough to go to the beach but anyway we made a shaker card using the rectangle framelits and these use oh my gosh what are they called again these will be retiring the tranquil texture sprinkles so we made this really fun shaker card and um this uses clear window sheet However, because I tinted the paper in the background, it almost looks green. So you can see that's pretty neat looking though. But I thought this was a really fun card. Good way, again, to use up little scrap pieces of designer series paper if you have it left. I know Gail did a really nice card with some shaker stuff. So we did this one at the last stamp club. All right, so what I wanted to show you today, one other thing. I wanted to show you, like, if you have stuff that you either haven't used or whatever the case may be. So, um, in case you all don't know, I do also, I do 31. So, I made some thank you cards, but I wanted to show you, I made them out of stuff that was, like, just scrappy, retired pieces that I have left. So, what I did was, I have these, um, where are they? These doilies. These were, like, the in-color doilies a while back, 2015, 17. So what I do is if I really can't find a use for the color, I just flip them over and use the whiter side. The green is a little bit not white, but it's not really that noticeable. But I use the other side. If I can't find something to do with them, I just snip them in half and I kind of throw them in with my cards. And then I just use little scrappy pieces of paper. So if you remember, this is Peekaboo Peach, which I wasn't really terrifically fond of. But... When you pair it with um, Bermuda Bay, and then this is Pear Pizzazz, and then this one is a newer one I made. So the two original cards were these, because I actually had the Peekaboo Peach ink to stamp it with. On these cards here, I did it with Versamark, and you can tell it's significantly lighter. But if you're ever trying to make a quick thank you, I mean, this is really simple. You just stamp, um, you get your, your paper base, and then you stamp the ink color onto the base. And then I just stamped the same color onto these pieces so you can see all the different ones. So this is Pear Pizzazz on Pear Pizzazz, Bermuda Bay. I did not have, um, I think this was, ooh, Sweet Sugar Plum and I already got rid of that ink. So I just went over this with Strawberry Slush, which, or Watermelon Wonder, one of the two. Didn't look quite as good, but still, really simple way to just make a bunch of thank you cards. So these are the thank you cards for my um, 31 customers. So. Very simple. I just kind of did a whole bunch of them. I cut strips of paper out, layered them all together. So that was really simple. So I did those. And then I wanted to show you what we were going to work on today. And this is just one of them. We're not going to do the same card. 
But what we'll do, let me put this here so I remember to mail these out. We're going to try, we're going to make one of these, but we're also going to try another idea that I kind of thought of last night. I don't know if I thought of it, but it came into my head, so I figured we'd give it a shot. But what we did with this, I was like, don't tell me I sealed this. I never seal these things. What we did with this is we used glossy cardstock, and we stamped an image with the shimmer paint. And I brought all of these out because these two are back in the clearance rack. They're like $3 each. So the copper and the gold are available right now in the clearance rack. They will only be while supplies last. But we do still have the frost white and the champagne mist. These are in the regular catalog. So these will be available for some time. But in case you missed these two, I know a lot of people um, wanted these and they went out of stock. So these are back in the clearance rack. Really reasonable. So what I thought we would do today is we're going to do this card, but we're going to do it instead with the Geared Up Garage. And do, we'll do something different for the background with the classic garage paper. I'm not 100% sure what yet. And then the other thing I thought we could try too is to run a piece of glossy cardstock through an embossing folder and see if it takes off some of the finish and we could roll over it that way. So we are going to use the brayer for this as well. So I just kind of thought that would be like a good jumping off point and we'll see what happens from there. So let me grab my brayers before I forget. So you can either use, if you have um, a rubber brayer, which I have one from a long time ago, you could use a rubber brayer or you could use the sponge brayers and these are carrying over. So the sponge brayer, you get two handles and I believe you get four sponges. So I think you get one on each sponge and then two extras. So if you get that, that's what it comes in. Um, you could also, if you're in a pinch, you could use a Stampin' Sponge to put your color on. So just kind of depends. I'm going to just do one with all three and we'll see which one looks better. That way, in case you are undecided on which one you want to do. And the other thing we're going to do, and I'm just going to use a dirty sponge for this, is we're going to dab the ink color onto our stamp that way we're not dipping it in so we're just kind of dabbing it on and we'll do it that way so I just have some kind of little smaller pieces here these are four three of these are four by three so it measures three inches by four inches and then this one's just a little scrap I had left over so this is a half a sheet of um, cardstock so if you see it's like this so it's four inches by eleven so it's the other half of this, except this is four and a quarter. So this is one full sheet here. So we'll just fool around with this and see like what it turns out to look like. And then, good morning from sunny Minnesota. It's sunny here, but you know what's funny? So I was telling you I have black fingernails because I refuse to wear gloves. I don't know why. I'm strange. But we did like all this kind of planting and I don't usually plant things until after Mother's Day here because we always get these crazy things. And it was like 38 degrees last night. And I have this big traveler palm that I moved. This is the second year that I moved it back outside, or the third year it might even be. And I'm like, of course I put that outside and it's probably going to die. But so far, I think it looks okay. Hopefully it made it. But every it never fails. If I decide to plant something, every it frosts. So I should know better. Really, I should. I should just wait till after Mother's Day. So we're going to use um, Geared Up Garage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the car for one, and we'll do the car with the, um, let's do it with something different. We'll do it with the copper, just to get a good resist. I don't know exactly what color we'll do, or we could do gold, either one of those. And then we'll do another one with just the toolbox. And that way I can repeat it more than one time, and then we'll put something on the front side. So I don't really know exactly what we're gonna do, but we'll, we'll make something happen. So I'm gonna just put this on a block. And I'll put the car on a block. These are the new cling mount stamps. So you can see you don't really have to put much effort into them. They do stick super well. And in case you don't know how to mount these, um, I do have a video on my YouTube channel. And you probably can search it here on Facebook as well. But it'll show you how to mount these. And just as an FYI, because sometimes people think that the clear mount are the sticky ones that are not. The clear mount are the ones that don't stick to the block. So unless you don't put the stickers on these, they do not actually stick to the blocks. The cling mount, so cling is the new one. If you accidentally got something in clear mount and you're like, why doesn't it stick? It's because it's clear, not cling. So what we're gonna do is, let's see. We'll do the car first and we'll do it in copper. We'll just do something different. 
So I'm going to shake up my shimmer paint. You wait until Memorial Day. Well, that's probably just with the whole... Man, if I waited till Memorial Day, none of my flowers would bloom. I think I did wait one year, and it takes them forever to pop up, which I understand why you're waiting. So what I'm going to do is you shake this up, and then I just kind of use the lid as like my dipper. So then I'll take a sponge dauber, and I do keep these just for shimmer. So this one is just for shimmer because it's kind of hard to get it off. And I just dip in, get it wet, and then you dip this onto your, your stamp. And you do want to make sure that you really, even if you clean this off, you really clean it off well after you are finished stamping. So we're just, I'm just going to kind of put these randomly. So I'm going to put a car. You do One thing you do need to make sure of is that you're careful because with the glossy paper, things can be a little bit extra sticky. So we'll put another one this way. And I'm gonna set I'm gonna keep doing these that way I can kind of set them aside. And I'm just gonna do the tail end of this one. That way they'll dry because they do need to dry. So we'll have to see if these are terrifically wet. So you could just do it like that because it is really neat. Definitely picks up a lot of the detail. But I'm gonna set this one on the side and grab my cleaning rags. As I like to call them. I call everything a rag. <laughs> so you could clean this off. I'm going to do it just for now, just with a baby wipe, just so it doesn't dry on there. Um, but again, I would still, after you're done with this, give it a good rinse in the sink with, with some mild soap and water. I kind of scrub it up to get some stuff in the crevices. And then I'll just, oops, I just take my, uh, this is one of those non linty lint cloth and just wipe it off. But again, you still, you can see it's still a little shiny. It's not going to affect it, but if you want your stamp to be clean, that's what I would do. So then for the toolbox, we'll do this one in champagne. You have to wait till mid to late May. Yeah, but you guys prop, do you have longer, like a summer season than we do? Because I'm, I'm thinking maybe you do. Because our, um, I don't know if it's just the way our plants are, but some of our stuff just seems to croak a little bit early, especially the more tropical plants. We do have, don't get me wrong, we do have a pretty late summer here, considering. What I think I might do with this one is, since it's, the toolbox is silver, I think I'm going to do um, Cajun Craze as the back color. So it kind of gives it like the silver and the rusty look. Let's see. It doesn't have to be all dark either. It could be, I'm doing some of them without re-inking. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Just take your baby wipe. Yeah, Mother's Day in Nebraska, huh? Yeah, I mean, ours is the same way, Tammy, that sometimes it is in to um, September and October. But it kind of depends on what whatever plant it is specifically. But we, ha I do have some tropical plants. So you guys know we have the banana trees in the backyard. But I have this one palm that I bought. It was kind of one of those things where you could get rid of it. And I was like, I just couldn't throw it away. So I've been bringing that one in and out of the house. So these are the two we'll do with the embossed resist. You can see they're a little bit lighter. That's the toolbox. I'm going to set this over here. So now in the meantime, and again, I haven't done this before. Let me clean a little bit of this. I have a little goop line here. Um, I haven't done this before, so I don't really know if it is or isn't going to do anything. So this is kind of just a crapshoot, honestly. I'm just trying it, throwing things against the wall and seeing what will stick. So I'm going to do it with two different things. I'm going to do one with the tin tile folder. So let's see if we want. That's the deboss. I'm going to put it so the glossy side is on the bottom. So the non-label side. That way it's going to give a press to it. And I'm going to kind of just slightly line it up like that and then I'm going to do one also with the leaves I don't know why I'm picking leaves if I'm choosing cars but I just figured we'll see what works and I do want it to be like something is going to stick up actually I'm going to do this one the other way so this one I'm going to do so it's debossed so the leaves go in so I'm just going to put these two in and I'm going to run them through 
the big shot. Let's see if I can do this without making a, a holy mess. So remember, these are both uh, thick folders. So you only need your regular platform. I think you need both cutting plates, but I'm, let me see if I can remember. If this is too hard to crank, I might be wrong. Yeah, you only need one cutting plate with this. So I'm going to use my yucky one. So one cutting plate and the regular platform. Um, let's see. Okay, so it definitely did give, this is opposite what I thought it was going to be, so that's good. It gave something. So I'm going to put this one on the side, and then we're going to do the same with this, the tin tile folder. Run this through. And I do love the heat, because there's times when the air conditioner is on in the house, and I will just go sit outside, because I prefer to be warm in, in the air. So there we go. We have both of those. Okay, so we'll see what this looks like. Again, I don't really know. I'm not making any promises. It might look might look wonderful, and it could possibly look awful, and it might not do anything at all. So we'll see. Let me move these. I want to move this stuff over so I don't have a catastrophe. All right, so with this, you could do a couple things because it does emboss well. It's very shiny. So let me try... And I have plenty more paper, so if we need to do another one, we can. I'm going to do the sponge first. And I'm going to do this in... How about if we do it in, one, in the new color? We'll try the terracotta tile and see what that looks like. So I just have a sponge. We'll see what it looks like. So this is just sponged. So you can kind of see the grooves better. Now what you can do is you can also take either a um, a paper towel or whatever and you can rub some of the stuff off with your towel. Another thing you could do if you had this handy, and I think I took it back downstairs, I don't think it's up here, is you could sand some of this off so it would only do part of it. So that would be pretty cool. Oh, I'm looking at your, your elevations too high for anything tropical. Wow. That's crazy. I never even wouldn't have even thought of that. So you could sand this off if you wanted to. And then it would resist some of the other stuff. I don't have anything sandy. I don't even have like an I could do it with a nail file even if I had it, but hmm. That would have been a good idea. Okay, so we'll go with this. That'll be that one. And then I'll do the same thing, but with the, the foam roller just to see what the coverage looks like. Now, one thing you do want to be careful when you have these tips here. You want to make sure you don't press into here because it can rip that uh, foam pad. So just kind of roll across the top pretty gently. And let's see. Like I know I have a scrap piece of paper here somewhere. So I'll go across this one. So this doesn't get into the grooves nearly as much. And let me wipe this off. So you will get a little bit more white. So again, this one we did with the sponge. This one we did with the sponge brayer. This one has a lot nicer of a coverage. This is kind of more spotty. So I'm still not like a huge fan of the sponge brayer unless you want something really light. So I tend to like the sponging overall. So let me do one more. And what I'm going to do with this one, just for the heck of it, I'm just going to do a little bit on the side here. I should have left a little bit white, but this is the rubber brayer. Ooh. I folded a piece of the cardstock. You can totally see, and here I missed, so you can see. So sponge, sponge brayer, rubber brayer. I love the rubber brayer. That is one of my favorite, favorite tools. It gives a super nice coverage on that. And let me see if I can wipe this off so we can use this again. Normally, I would go to the sink to, to rinse this off, but... Since that's in a whole nother room, I don't want to make you wait that long. All right. And then what I'm going to do is <laughs> too cold for this desert girl. You guys are funny. I always like reading your comments because you crack me up with what it is you're talking about. Okay. So there's that. Now, ideally, if we did have a sander up here, I think it would be really neat if you 
kind of ran a sander across the top of these leaves because then it wouldn't pick up so much of the paper. Gosh, I don't know if I even had like a nail file. I know we used to have like those buffing things. I don't think I was around when we had those, but it would be pretty, pretty cool. Let's see. No, that's not going to do enough. Here's what I'm going to do. I have this knife that I use for something. I don't really know what, but I'm just going to scrape across this. See if, we'll see if it does anything. But you can, so also you see here, you can also do this with the, the brayering, the sponge brayering, the rubber brayer, or just the sponge. So that is making a little bit of a pattern into it. I kind of want to just like scrape off a little bit of this. So I'm going to do it in a couple spots on the leaves. So all those plastic utensils you have saved that you never use for anything, now you know you can get them out <laughs> and use them for your cards. Let's see. All right, that's good enough. So just gonna just give this a swipe to get the dust off. Okay, so now you can see that's definitely roughed up a little bit. I'm gonna do this in Mossy Meadow just because it'll kind of stick like if we decide to do a car card with this, it'll slightly stick with the color. So let's see. I'm gonna do the sponge again. I'm gonna pick a, di a different sponge. Hopefully this one's clean because the sponge gave a nicer coverage. I'm going to do part sponge and part rubber brayer. You could also even go back and do a little bit of shimmer paint with this. So it's kind of neat because the way it picks up, it's got like the edges of it. It almost, almost gives like a shadow or a depth look to the leaves, which is pretty neat. And if you probably really sanded it, you would definitely get more of an area. All right, and then I'm going to do this one. Wow, this is super messy. Not what I'm doing, What whatever we did before with this. And then I'm going to do the rubber brayer on the other one. And I'm not, you see how dark that is. So um, let me put this down. Oh, that's really dark. Kind of neat though because look how it lights the edges so if you do this because you're going to have so much height on it come on that's really cool looking so yeah almost have like a negative image so i like that a lot that looks really really cool as well <laughs> you're crying i feel the same way suzanne that's how i felt the first time when they got rid of it and i guess we didn't buy enough of it those that love it didn't buy enough of it. <laughs> and maybe the other people are like, what do you use glossy paper for? That just seems crazy. I still have some from last time, as a matter of fact. But I did buy multiple packs when it came back in stock. Just to do my part in supporting it. <laughs> I did love the glossy paper, though. It was always one of my favorites. Okay, so here you can see. Oops, just drop that. So here you can see this is with the sponge. So just the regular sponge. And then this is with the rubber brayer. So you can get two completely different effects, which is really, both of them are really cool. And again, if you were to able to get like a sanding block and sand this, I think it would look really neat as well. And then this one we did sponge, sponge brayer, rubber brayer. So you can tell the difference between the three there. You can completely see that, which is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that these two, that's a pretty color combo too, by the way, if you haven't seen that before. Um, I'm going to make sure that these two things that I did are dry. So just give me one minute here. And again, if you're just coming in, we're going to do um, glossy paper again on Wednesday's Facebook Live. But we're going to do it with wax paper and ironing so if you've never seen that before it's a really neat resist technique which i like a lot which is the same thing this shimmer paint is it's a shimmer resist so let me see looks mostly dry i'm gonna just lightly hit this with the heat tool just to kind of slightly dry it if it's not dry all the way so i'm gonna just put it on um one that way it's not really like heating it's just kind of drying
And I probably should have done a few of these last night. That way they would definitely be dry because I don't remember how long it took me to get these dry. But we'll see. You don't want to hold it in one spot too long with the glossy paper because it will um, make it warp and singe because of the finish on it. So let's see. I think it's pretty dry actually believe it or not oh, looks pretty good okay so now this is going to act as if um like versamark or if you actually put um embossing powder on it it's going to resist so what we're going to do again we can do this multiple ways i'm going to do this one with cajun craze you could do terracotta tile as well if you wanted to because it is a little bit lighter but i'm going to do this first one with the sponge so same thing again just grab this paper and since I kind of already did this with a color even though it was a little bit lighter I'm gonna just sponge it just lightly just so you can see what it looks like so you have that this is a little bit darker so I'm kind of glad I didn't do the heavy pressing and then you're gonna take your either a paper towel or whatever it may be and you're gonna kinda, and this probably would give you a much more deep emboss if it was dried a little bit more. But when you rub away, you see you have that impression. So that's really neat and it's got the sparkle to it. So the more you rub, and again, if you use a lighter ink, it would definitely be much lighter. So if you were doing this, be cool if we had a black shimmer paint if anyone's listening we could get that for Halloween would be great but there you go so there's one so when we do this car one I'm gonna do it with a light light gray and instead of using this because it's a little darker when it transfers I'm gonna use a um can either use a sponge or a sponge dauber and I think just for lightness sake I'm gonna use a sponge that way it's not super heavy handed on the um, application so I'm gonna use I think personally gray granite is our lightest gray you could probably also get away with smoky slate but this has a little bit more of like a blue purplish tint to it I would not go with um, basic gray though because that would be really dark so I'm gonna just take my sponge since I've used multiple sides of this I'm gonna just use the flat side here also that way I won't pick up terrifically large amount of ink Okay. All right. So then we're going to just sponge over. You can see some of my green is coming through there. <laughs> kind of looks like a rusty car. I'm just going to, so I'm dabbing and then kind of spreading. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a lot of ink and I'm going to do the edge really dark. And if this isn't dark enough, we could actually move to the basic gray. I think I'm going to. So I kind of did the center there. Let me make sure this has enough on it. And then I'm going to, so that was gray granite. I'm going to do basic gray for the edge. Now it's really just hitting the edge of the card because you guys know it doesn't really stick to the glossy paper as much, but it's at least defining the edge of the card for us. So it kind of has that dirty car feel. And then I'm just going to sponge a couple spots. All right, now, same thing again. So that was basic gray and gray granite. I'm going to take my towel again, rag, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to just brush this around. What it's going to do is it should absorb some of the stuff. So you can see it's got the ink off there. And it kind of makes that copper pop again. So you can see the copper through there. All right. So there we go. Both of those. You can see there when you tint them, it's got almost like a holographic effect because of the shine of the paper. So one other thing, 
um, is if you, this looks really cool, but if you actually heat emboss onto this, it bubbles it up. So you really can't heat emboss. This is a cool way to kind of get that technique without it. Um, I, I should say I've never been able to get it to heat emboss without it getting kind of bubbly and a little bit looks like it might catch on fire. <laughs> So I'm going to put these on the side and then, let me see, move this out of the way. All right. And now what we'll do is we will back at least these two. I don't really, we could do something with this one for sure because this one is, let's see. Yeah, that one's pretty dry. We can make something with this too with a car. This one doesn't really go so much with the car theme but I just wanted to be able to show you guys the embossing so what we'll do is you could make this into a Father's Day card birthday card so I'm gonna back this with some of the geared garage we'll add some sort of maybe a sentiment we also have this oil spot which I love this I'm so glad this stamp set is carrying over into the new catalog but also you can make a birthday card with itty bitty greetings, or if you just needed a card for something else, you could use, I'm sorry, itty bitty birthdays or something else with itty bitty greetings. So let me see, I'm gonna do this one more time because I might end up using this for something else as we finish this card. Okay. Trash men are here in case you hear thundering noises in the background <laughs> all right so for the copper ones <coughs> excuse me I think I'm going to use something dark let's see that with the wheels <coughs> excuse me I like a lot of these have like these really nice dark backgrounds there's another one too the same those are pretty similar i think if we already have one of these these are pretty similar too this one's kind of got more like tire tracks all right so we're going to back it with these and then we will add something else to them so i know i have like a million of them here so this one's kind of neat because of the tire tracks but also if you wanted to go with something um more like red you could put something red on the background as well just kind of depends on what you want to go for i also like the engines that's a really neat one too so what we'll do is let's see we'll get my trimmer and so i think that one i did was three by four so we'll do four and a quarter by three and a quarter so that would layer onto there nicely if you wanted to do that. Let's see what this one looks like if we did one that's a little bit bigger. That's just a little bit too wide. So instead, let's go with something a little bit lighter. So this was probably four and a quarter. I'm betting this is like two, two inches, yeah. I'll tell you one other thing that's pretty funny is I cannot believe how much cutting paper has improved my math and visual estimation skills. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is like that too, but we can back that onto that one. And then for this piece here, let's do this onto, I'm going to do this onto this with the car pieces in the background. So let's see, that's the keys. Let me find another piece of that. The cool part about this paper is it's got a lot of really great, like this map thing is really neat, but sometimes the side you use, like you don't know, you can, I continually use the same side because I like it so much. All right, so this one again was, this was three by four, but I'm going to make this a little bigger. So what I'm going to do with this one is, so, so I'm going to make this larger. So I'm going to do four by five and a quarter. So it lays over top of the um, layer of the cardstock, and then we'll put this on with something else. It's a little bit small. Let's see. I'm going to try to go with a little bit, one that's a little bit more black. And then if you wanted to, you could use all these little leftover pieces here and make a card like this. So you could make a guy card like this with all these little pieces of scraps. So let's see, three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then we'll put something onto the front of this as well. So this will lay on here, will lay on there, will lay on something else. 
right, so all we have to do is grab the rest of our... Yeah, I'm on today. I'm going to be on today and Wednesday and possibly Friday, but I don't know. Friday might be a little difficult because we're we're trying to get the rest of our mulch done. So that I will be up in the air. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to go with, I don't want to use black. But again, just to kind of keep with the darker theme, I think I might do this one on to um, basic gray. We'll do basic gray for one. And... Mm, another green would be nice, like a dark. We'll do one of these ones to mossy meadow. Because that's a nice, like, kind of grungy, dirty color, which will work well with this rusty color. There you go. And I'll do for the last one, I'll do it onto a gray base. We'll see what this looks like gray on gray. I don't know if that's actually a correct cut of a card or not. It looks a little wide. Let's see. Five and a half, four. I don't think that's going to fit. So I think this is going to have to be five and a half. Let's try this one four and a quarter. Nope. I'm thinking wrong, aren't I? Five and a half. Let's see. Let's see if what the score's like. It might be completely wrong. Four and a quarter. Nope, that's right. All right, so that one all folded. And then we just really need a little bit of white. So again, you could use like little bits of um, glossy cardstock and stamp your card on and cut it out. You could also use your thinlets and you could cut out some of the other cards on here if you wanted to. We could just cut this one out, as a matter of fact, on one of these. Put some little pieces on. Um, this one does not have a thinlet, but I want to take a minute to show you guys this just while I thought of it. Let me grab my thinlets. In case you missed it. So in case you guys missed this, I did some, um, I did a blog hop the other week where I was telling everyone that, as you know, sometimes you can only cut something out one way. So like, for example, we can cut this Mustang out this way. Now, we don't have any that are facing the opposite direction here. But if this car were to be facing the other direction, so say you wanted to cut this out, which this is a pretty, actually, this is the same one. This is a close match, right? But it doesn't work. So here's what you do. You go around the back. Now, you do need a very bright light for this, so I can't really show you exactly. But what you do is you go around the back, and you hold this up to a light, and you line up the framelit. And this one only lines up kind of like, oh, it's just a little bit off because of the, the shape of the tail of this card. So what you would do is you'd line this up, and I'm going to show you the best I can with what it looks like, even though it's not going to cut it out exactly. Let's see. One second here so I can explain what I mean. So what you do is you hold this up so you can see the back of it through a shadow. So if you can imagine a light poking through here. And then if you cut this out, it actually will cut out the opposite image. So just in case you guys have never seen that before, it's not going to work exactly with this car, like I said, because I thought they were the same. And they are pretty similar, but they're not exactly the same. But I'm going to show you what I mean. So then what you do is you're going to cut this out this way. So I just want to show you, just in case. You can do this with a lot of the... um the dies from the animal expedition. And if you want another example of this, I did it for that Mother's Day card. So if you look at the, um, on my blog, the Stampin' Friends blog hop. So one thing you do wanna do is once you get this in place though, definitely put a piece of tape, that way it doesn't move, okay? And again, this won't, won't match exactly because it's not really what I mean, but you'll kinda of get the, the gist of it. So put it through and, but like, why did it take me this long to think of this? And the reason I thought of it is because <laughs> um, I did CAT scans and x-rays and x-ray school and everything. And when you hold something up to the light box in taking an x-ray, you're looking at the image, but you can also line things up from the back. So you can see it is pretty close. It is certainly not exact, but now you have the opposite car. So if this car, 
was exactly facing the other way, it would have worked out perfectly. But you still, for this one, because it's not exactly what it, what it looked like, there's just like a little bit I'll trim off because it kind of gave it that pumped up engine. But still, pretty cool that you can cut opposite things out. I mean, who knew? Who knew? And how come it took me so long to think of it? That's the part that I think bothers me more than anything. <laughs> All right, so... Let's see. I'm going to put some of these together. So I'm going to just grab my famous fast fuse that I know everyone does not love except for me. Put this on here. Okay, I'm going to put this onto this base, which I did not score. So we'll just fold this in half. Use our bone folder. Put this part down. Oops. This doesn't really matter which way it goes on. Something about this card must not be straight. Hold on. Maybe I cut this one too small. Yeah, it's four and a half. No wonder. Too big. I was thinking, I thought I cut my paper right, but this doesn't seem to want to match up correctly. All right, so we'll put that on here. You could also use the, um, if you wanted to, the black foil sheets. Another cool idea. Let's see if we get that on there a little straighter. And then we'll put this on here. You put another car on there. Nope, ran out of fast fuse. How do you like that? In case you might still have it, you do actually throw away this entire piece here. And of course, I probably don't have a refill because I could show you how to use it, but yep, you know, I don't have one handy. So in that case, we'll move on to another one. Put this on like that. And then this one we could just put right onto the front here. Actually, I'll put this with dimensionals. And then we'll just add some sort of a uh, greeting to it. I don't know exactly what I'm going to add yet, so we'll say, kind of, I'm just going to set that there lightly, and let's see, I could just do happy birthday, that's a pretty simple one, and I also have a piece, we'll just use this little extra piece here, I'm just going to stamp this onto the, um, this was gray granite, but I'll use basic gray. Pretty good. And then we'll just trim this off square. It is a teeny bit crooked, but that's okay. I'm going to just trim this off just a little. And if you wanted to, if you're like really fretting about the crookedness of it, you could take your bone folder and kind of rough the edge of it up a little bit. So then you really won't notice it as much. You could also tear it off. Looks like you just ripped it out of a piece of paper. It's also always an easy way to cover up a whoopsie. There we go. Now that's pressed down. So there's one. All right, that's one of the cards. And then I'm going to put this other thing together here. Maybe when we do the one on Wednesday... What I will try to do is um, aim that one, since this is more like a guy, we can aim that one towards like more of a Mother's Day feel. I'll see if I can do something like that. So I'll do that one over there. Let's see. What else can we put in the background? We could just put like a piece of gears. That's a little, I don't really like that so much. Put the tires. That will look kind of neat. We could do strips of, since we have it, let's do this. We'll do a strip of the tires and a strip of the cars, and we'll put these together. So I'll just grab my trimmer. It doesn't even really necessarily, you could even put this strip because it would completely cover up that hole. So we'll just do that just so I can show you. Let's see with the line. Oh Gosh, I almost don't want to cut that car in half, though.
four and a half. I'm going to trim this up just, to, just so it's a little bit smaller. Two and a quarter. So I have this piece here. You could put, you could always like lay this on top. And I know I kind of went off kilter from where I was originally going with that one. And then we'll just cut off a piece of this. Do like a two inch by four and a half. We'll see what these look like layered together. So get have I'm gonna have to turn it this way now, I think. Let's see what I was going for. It might be a little bit too much gray here. Nope, we're gonna go that way, but I wanna do kind of wanna cover it. But at the same time, I think it needs a little color. Let me cut off one more strip of this. It's like a half inch piece. <laughs> Cover the cutout, yeah, most definitely. Let's see, so what we'll do is we'll put this. Trying to decide which way I want this to go because these toolboxes go like a totally different direction. We'll go like that. Can lay something underneath. If that's a little too long, we can pull that up. There's this other little piece we have here. Just cut this one off. All right, so I'm going to put all this together. I know it looks kind of crazy. Might even look a little uh, stupid where you're like, what is she doing? But trust me, let's see if it works. Put that there. I'm going to put this piece a little bit cockeyed. This piece will go over. You could always, even if you wanted to add a little something. I know the orange is a little bit much with that terracotta, so I'm not really sure how that would look, but... Hold on, that was this way. Okay. Before I put this down, I'm gonna just kind of rough the edge of this one a little bit. I'm not gonna do the long ends, I'm just kind of doing the short ends. that all right and then let's grab one more thing where is my stamp set you could do best dad that's a really cool one to do happy father's day would be another neat one let's do the happy father's day and where is my white scrap let's see if i have a big enough piece for this to fit Not, I might have to actually get out an entire, yeah, piece of paper. There we go. I got one. Knew there had to be something in there. All right. So I'm going to do this um, in black. So pull this off. It's a little, just a teeny bit too small, but we'll make it work. This does have a... Um, A die cut, but we're going to just hand trim it so I don't have to bring the big shot back out again. And while I have it here, I'm going to just do this because I think one of these was rusty color. Let's see. Nope, I better put it on the ground. Here we go. I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of that rusty color in there just to bring that color in. So again, you can use your uh, your die cuts for this if you like. By the way, in case you missed it, just thinking about this, the new die cuts that are the Stampin' Up dies, not the Sizzix dies, do cut considerably closer to the images, which I kind of like a lot. There's a lot less white space for that. 
And then I'm just going to take this and go over the edge. Just so we don't have that white line. Kind of adds a little something else to it. Okay, and then we can put a dimensional on the back of that. We also have those keys if you wanted to add the keys to it. Could add the keys. So, no, that's a lot of pieces, but you can see your embossed or your um, resist image there. So there are two cards. Other thing you could do if you wanted to, if you felt like this was not enough, you could take your little splotchy image. And I think this is one of my favorites. I know this isn't on there as far as it could be, but take your little splotchy image, put like a couple grease stamps. I think it was all you could do to keep this card clean before you gave it to your dad. But that's pretty cool. Take a little. I am not brilliant, Joyce. You take that back. Thank you. I just like to, uh, I can't stop. That's my problem. It's just like whatever I do is just never enough. So those are two pretty, pretty neat cards with not a lot of stuff. Let me wipe this off so I don't make this into a mess. I just want to tell you right now, my big shot is teetering on the cart it's on. So let's hope it doesn't fall because that would be a total catastrophe and quite embarrassing because, you know, I don't clean things up enough here. If you guys really saw how I stamp, I think you would just all completely laugh out loud in the ridiculousness of how everything is so precariously perched, perched everywhere. All right, so we have this last one. Let me put this down first. Okay. And put that down. There we go. So what do we have this little piece of, whoopsie, little piece of something here. So while we have this dirty, grungy thing out, the oil slick, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of oil slicks onto this mossy meadow. I, I really think this is like one of the coolest stamps ever. This splat of oil is awesome. <laughs> I love it. It takes so little to make me happy but it's so it really is so neat all right so we have this little piece could look like a piece of the floor we have like a little piece of car we could put here we have the other side as well how about if we do this one as anybody have any suggestions look i also have this other toolbox that i did a while ago we could use that there let's see what other pieces i have in here i have a lot of pieces because i cut a bunch of these out oh. How handy. I cut a bunch of these out that one day when I had that um, craft fair that was a complete bust that apparently nobody around here was interested in making cards. Shame on them. But I have all these little pieces. We could stick some of these on there. Yeah, that'll be fun. We'll do that. How about that and that one car? So this is one of the cars that I cut out actually from this piece, believe it or not, that's underneath it here. So we'll do that. I don't think I'm going to do the toolbox. I'll leave that out. So I'm going to do the gears. These were done with the black uh, foil paper. And we have to do some sort of a greeting, and we'll figure that part out. So let's see. Other thing we could do, too, is we could actually, let's cut this in half, and we'll put this underneath. I'm kind of just going straight up. What we'll do is we'll put these, like, half here. And part of it here. There we go. And if you're worried about losing part of this, you could kind of take this one off. Watch, we'll do this. And we'll put this part above it. So we'll put this here, that up there, and we'll somehow put this underneath of something here. Okay? So let me... Fast use is going to be a little rough on that. So let me put this. This you want to put on with a nicer, more gentle glue. I'm just trying not to make it take terrifically long. Put that there. And this here. Okay. So then we have this little piece left. We'll actually put this on with something nicer. We have our car. And we have to have some sort of a sentiment. So let's see. I have this nice piece of paper here. I'm not going to use that piece. 
So let's go with anybody else. We could even you could even do like graduations. You could do congratulations. That would be another one. That'd be a good one to do. Let's see. I think I have that stamp here. Bitty bitty greetings. <sighs> congratulations. Or you could do happy graduation. Either one. Let's do congratulations. So again, these this stamp set I still have is in the clear mount. So I don't put the greeting on the back of it yet because I don't have enough sticky stuff to go through all those things. So I'm going to just put this on with, actually, you know what I'm going to do first? Before I stamp that, I'm going to stamp this in gray granite and then I'm going to stamp the sentiment. Let's see. Do I have anything to stamp this off onto? Not really. So there. <laughs> How you like that? Look at that. I stamped it on here to stamp it off a little bit. And I got oil spots with hexacon. It kind of looks like boobs. <laughs> I'm telling you, I truly cannot make this stuff up. Mm. All right. So you can really give this to the person, the dude you want to give it to if you want it to. Oh, Lord. And we're not even stamping after dark. How you like that? Oh my gosh. Take that, Dina Rico. <laughs> oh Lord, I cracked myself up. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to have to put that on that side because it's just too funny. <laughs> Look, I am going to end up cutting it out because I was going to do a, like a little thing there and it is kind of crooked. So we'll see. Let me see. Oh, snap. Or what we could do is we could punch it out. Let's just punch it out. Come on. We have to put it on here now. Let me get my punch. Let's see. All right. <laughs> so we can either use, we'll see which one fits better. The Taylor tag. It's called kissing. Fran, that's right. This is a, a boob kissing. Kissing. <laughs> So this one might be a little too big, yeah. This is a new um, stamp that's in the new catalog. And please forgive me. I cannot remember the name of it. Um, I don't remember what it's called. But we're going to punch this out with that. Because it's just funny. Let's see if we can get... There you go. Congratulations. With boobs. <laughs> oh, Lord. You know, you just never know around here, right? I'm going to, while I got this dirty sponge here, I'm going to sponge the end of our dirty card. This takes dirty cards to a whole new level. We have to make sure we don't say anything so Facebook doesn't take this because apparently they've been pulling videos off left and right. Not for dirty stuff, but just for stupid things. But anyway, <laughs> we'll put this here. Congratulations. Hope you get some action in the back of your car. I don't know. That's terrible, but there you go. <laughs> that is the real me. <laughs> All right, let me put some let me put some stuff on here. Oh lord. My goodness. It's all everybody on here's fault. I haven't had any breakfast yet. So apparently I am delirious. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Story label. That could be it. It could be story label. <laughs> I think you're right. I think it might be story label. Oh my gosh. This is a story. All right. Right. Talk about a story card. Let's see if this is correct. We at least want the congrats. I guess we want everything so crooked here. I don't know if we want the congratulations straight or the car straight. We'll put it like that. There you go. We're done. Good Lord, someone stop me before I get in trouble. Okay, so let me put these. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. These were some fun cards we made today, weren't they? My goodness. Let me put these out of the way real quick, and then I'll put all this here so you guys can get a good picture of these if you're taking pictures. And black, and somehow, I know I have gray somewhere, but I don't know where I put it. That's okay. Just move these over so I don't make a big mess. Move this. So remember, just as a tip, do go rinse your, um, if you use your shimmer paint, do rinse them off in something good. 
And also the gold and the copper shimmer paint are back in the clearance rack. I think they're like $3.20. The um, frost white and the champagne mist will be in there for a while, so you don't have to worry about those. So we did this, and then we made these cards. And you could always add a little something to this if you think it's missing something, like that that extra, um, you could put some gears on there too if you wanted to. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know when to stop. That could be, that's a little too much. Put just like a little silver gear on there if you wanted to just add like a little something extra to it. But thank you all for joining me today. This certainly has been a hilarious, uh, if nothing else, stamp session that we had today. Um, as you know, April 30th is tomorrow. So tomorrow, um, actually I should say not tomorrow. Wow. Wednesday, if you're a demonstrator, you're able to order from the new catalog. So if you want to be able to order from the new catalog, I don't know what it is. It's just pre-order, so it's not everything. If you want to be able to do that, if you sign up as a demonstrator, you are able to do that. That's one of the perks. Um, but also, May 1st, there is a new kind of like a super bundle. I don't even know what you would call it that's coming. If you guys haven't seen it, I did send out an email about it. But it is a really, really pretty, it's like a super bundle. It's got foil paper and <laughs> surprisingly enough, it has rose gold shimmer paint. But that's the only way you'll be able to get it is by that bundle. So I'm like really tempted because it has rose gold foil and it has a stamp set. It has dyes. It has um, designer. It has a lot of stuff in it. But it's available to customers and demonstrators at the same time. It's called Everything is Rosy. just came to me. And um, it's only available while supplies last. So you guys know how that goes. So if something that you think you really want, you should probably order it on May 1st. Um, if not, you know, I don't know how long it's going to last. I'm guessing it's probably not going to last really long. That's just my summation. Also, if you haven't been to my blog, go and check it out. Because I did list a bunch of people that won prizes. And nobody's answered me thus far. So, if you guys want a prize, you have to fill out the giveaway form. The names are on the blog post, in case you didn't see it. I will draw some new names again for some card kits, because I have a bunch of card kits that I can give away. So, I'm just chatting on here, in case you haven't said anything. Make sure you take time to leave some sort of a comment, inappropriate or not is fine. <laughs> and um, I will draw a name for the for some winners for that. So I can give, give some stuff away and clear out some of my space. But anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining me today with this ridiculousness that is Rach the Stamper. I hope you guys have a good day. And I will see you again on Wednesday, same time, 930 Eastern Standard Time. And I'll post these cards um, to the blog once I get to go downstairs and take pictures of them. But thank you guys for joining me. I'll see you again on Wednesday. Have a super day.